you have called us from the time of our birth to where we are, Lord. And Father, we are grateful because your love has been shown to us, O oh God. Father, we thank you for creating all things within us, Lord. And Father, we ask that whatever plan that you have towards the end of this month, O oh God, even to next month, Lord, let it be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we ask that you will have your way, even as we look into your word. Let everyone hear you speak, O oh God. Amen. I ask that you will use me, Lord. I pray that as I speak, that you will speak through me, O oh God. That whatever your spirit tells me to say, Lord, let me not hold back. Amen. Oh Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we glorify you and we exalt you. We ask that you receive our glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How's everyone doing today? Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Uh, today is another year, the Youth Sunday in 2017. Can we give God a hand clap? It's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, so I'm going to go straight into the word. The theme of the sermon that I'm going to speak on is provoking the love of God through obedience. This is actually a follow-up from the rector's sermon last week. He preached about provoking God's favor. And now I'm going to speak on provoking the love of God through obedience. Right. Amen? Amen. And our text that will be taken from is the first lesson, Nehemiah chapter 9. I'm going to read just three verses. And then we'll go into another verse within that chapter. Nehemiah chapter, Nehemiah chapter 9 from 16 to 18, and I read. But they and our fathers acted proudly, hardened their necks, and did not heed your commandments. They refused to obey, and they were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them. But they hardened their necks and in their rebellion, they appointed a leader to return to their bondage. But you are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and did not forsake them. Even when they made a molded calf for themselves and said, This is your God that brought you out of Egypt and worked great provocations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Nehemiah the prophet you know, had this flashback from the time of Moses. When the Israelites made a golden calf and saying that this is God that saved you from Egypt. And God was just looking down on, on them and he was furious. But Moses had to do something. He had to go and talk to them. Even though he, would, even though he had to talk to them out of anger. He had to do something because he couldn't hold anything back. So Nehemiah is, is having this flashback and he is getting God involved on the flashback that he had with Moses. Because Moses, what he did, whoever uh, inspired Nehemiah through Moses, he actually imagined it in his mind. Amen? Amen. So the three things that we are going to 
look into. The three key points is one, understanding that disobedience can cause rejections from God. Amen? Amen. The second one is provocation that leads to love and respect. And the third one is how a Christian should provoke God's love through obedience. Amen? Amen. So the first one, understanding the understanding that disobedience can cause rejections from God. We just read it in verse 16 to 18. So what we have to understand is that it is important that we cannot go against God's word. Amen? Amen. Because whatever God has told you about, you cannot hold back. You have to go for it. Amen? Amen. And the second one, it is important that we ought to take the worship of God serious without any excuses. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? Because when you are worshiping God, you have to be serious. Yes, Even David himself, where, where he said in Psalms, he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. That's right. Meaning everything that's within, that's within him, his heart, his lungs, his tongues, let it bless the name of God. Amen? Amen? So let us not give any excuse on why we cannot worship God. Because it's a serious matter. I mean, that's why every church has praise and worship. Because it brings you to what God has in stores for you. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to move into the provocation that leads into love and respect. Amen? Amen. Someone read verse 26 of the same chapter 9 of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Nevertheless, they were disobedient. Yes. And rebelled against you. And cast your law behind their backs. And killed your prophets. You testified against them to turn them to yourself. And they worked great provocations. Hallelujah. Amen. And they worked great provocations. Now, I like how Nehemiah actually ended it. Because when you provoke God for his blessing, humility starts with it. Faith also comes with it. Amen? Amen? So another two things that we can understand from this is to provoke God's love is through sacrifice. And 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22 says it all. It talks about obedience is better than sacrifice. We've heard this verse uh, not, not too long ago. It is important that when you are obeying the will of God, that you have to sacrifice whatever you think that is your own possession. I like how uh, Jesus told the rich man, he said, sell everything you have. That's all, that's, that's all he said. But the rich man did not like it. But we, but we may know that the rich man had to sell everything that he had just to follow God. Amen? Amen. So obedience is better than sacrifice. You have to sacrifice whatever is within you. And the second thing is to provoke God's love is through submission to his will. <laughs> You have to obey the will of God. That way it will be fulfilled in your lives. Amen? Amen. And you can see that in John 14, verse 15, where it says, If you love me, you will obey my commandments. <laughs> Jesus said that. 
In order to, in, in, in order for you to love God, you have to obey His commandments. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to advise uh, the youths that are here. This advice, you know, it comes with this question: Why does respect comes before love? Why does it come before love? And I'll tell you why. It's because whenever, like, when you are asked to do one thing, you have to think about it before you, you, you get into any complaints. Even if you're not able to do that duty, you know, you can let them know and then they'll, they'll find a way to, to, to re replace you. Like if you like if someone calls you at a job and tell you and tells you uh, uh, can you work on this day and you you say that you can't they'll understand you because they'll find someone else that can work for you amen uh, just like uh, a few days ago uh, I did, I was supposed to go to work on Friday and uh, I couldn't go I had to call my boss to to say that. No, I can't go because I have a lot of things uh, to prepare. And uh, she understood, and she had, and she had uh, someone else to fill in for me. And that actually comes with love, because when you respect God, He will love you. If you respect anybody. That is here. God will will love that person because you respected that person. Amen. Amen. So this is my advice for the youth here. Those of you that have graduated from from uh, college, those of you that graduated high school, those of you that are going to go into elementary school, and all the levels. You have to show some respect, not only to the teachers, not only to anyone around you, but to yourself. Because without respect, you cannot move anywhere. You have to learn about respect, honesty, and obedience. And respect is another word for obedience. Amen? Amen. So you have to learn how to honor anyone that is older than you. I remember my, my uncle, he, he told, he, he actually made a reference somewhere in Ephesians where he says, um, uh, children obey your parents. And he said, it's not only your biological parents, anyone older than you, whether they're related to you or not. That is the most important uh, aspect when it comes to obedience and provoking God's love through obedience. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to go into the third key point, which is how a Christian should provoke God, how a Christian should provoke God's love through obedience. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. And we just read that. If someone gets that before me, you can go ahead and read it. Romans chapter 8, 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Our tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written. For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Did you Amen. read till 39? Okay. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Yes. Through him who loved us. Hallelujah. For I am persuaded that neither 
dead nor life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no hide, no death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 How to how a Christian, how we should provoke God's love through obedience. You know, Paul was talking to the Romans and he was giving them instructions on how the provocation of God has to move through love and obedience. Amen? Amen. So there are five ways on how a Christian should provoke God's love through obedience. Amen? Amen? Number one, from verse 35, experiencing that Jesus can never separate us from anything in the world. Because of his death, we rise with him. Amen. And that last day that he rose, and because of his death, he has loved us, even though we do not deserve it. We have to experience that Christ can never separate us. Our family cannot separate us. Our jobs cannot separate us. Even our, our, our relationship, like, like, the, like those of you that are married, your marriage cannot separate you from the love of God because God has loved you even before you all got married. Amen? Amen. Number two, experiencing the love of God that has lifted us from the ashes of defeat. You know, when, I, when I actually wrote that, you know, there's this song that came to my mind that says, uh, I, I've forgotten the lyrics. Like it, like it, says, it says something just like this. I've forgotten the lyrics to that song. Yeah, but it actually says it all because the love of God has lifted us. There's another song that, uh, that we all sing that says, uh, Lifted, I am lifted, I am lifted by the Lord Above sin and sorrows into the presence of the Lord yeah, that, that, that song, it, it's catchy to you, right? Yes. It is. You have been lifted by the love of God. Amen. And God has declared us the loved ones. Amen? Amen. Number three, declaring your victory and your freedom over your enemies. Amen. That's from Hallelujah. verse 37. You know, the enemy, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And all we have to do is prophesy. Yes, Lord. Ezekiel himself prophesied. You know, he, he, had, he, had, he received the question, can these dry bones rise again? Return, preacher. And all he did was prophesy. So in order for us to receive victory and freedom over our enemies, we have to prophesy. If it's your school and you're struggling, you have to prophesy. If it's your job and it's not going the way you thought it would, you have to prophesy. Amen. And when you and when you have prophesied, you have declared your freedom. Amen. You have declared your your, your victory. The song that we sing here, um, "I am a winner in the Lord Jesus." That's a very powerful song. And that, and that should be the anthem for this church. Amen? Yes, sir. You have to declare your victory and your freedom over your enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Number four, experiencing the persuasion of God in your life. When God persuades you to, to go to a certain place and receive your miracle, you cannot hold that back. You have to be persuaded to move. And when you are persuaded to move, you move by faith. Amen? Amen. That's from verse 38. And the last one is from verse 39. And it is receiving the love of Jesus Christ in your life. Which also stands for redemption. God has redeemed us. God has redeemed us from every sinful life. Every sinful lifestyle. And when we receive the love of Christ, you know, Christ lives in us. And we receive the process of how we act. How we act as Christ. Uh, we, all have heard, we all have heard this song. Uh, I think I heard this song when I was young. Uh, where it says, uh, I want to be like Jesus. That, that's, that's a message. If you want to be like Jesus Christ, receive his love. Even as a child, when Jesus uh, was about to receive the little children, uh, the disciples, you know, they, they had to move them out. But Jesus told them, suffered the kids to come to me because theirs is the kingdom of God. So as young as you all are, you have to receive the love of, of Christ. Amen? Amen. Nehemiah was provoked in the spirits when he was asking God to convict the Israelites from, from their obedience and pick the right path of God. Amen? Amen. He, 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 like God actually convicted the Israelites to turn from their wicked ways. And they were asking, and, and uh, you know, God was asking them to be real with themselves. If you were not here during the Sunday school, we, we discussed uh, on on how God prevents our confession and, uh, repentance. and repentance, and there were there were so many points. Being fake is is one of them. <laughs> now I like this expression that uh, you know uh, people my age uh, say that if 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 you're doing something that is that is not what you 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 say you are? Mm. This is the expression that they'll use. You're fake. No, it's on it. You're fake. Like the, like they'll bring out their hand like this and just point at you. You're fake. <laughs> You're fake. <laughs> what are you doing? You're fake. <laughs> Man. Amen. Amen. So God has been telling the Israelites through Nehemiah to pick the right path that God has prepared for them and also be real. On the other hand, Paul gave the Romans instructions on how to love, how, how to provoke God's love over their lives. And that's really important. You know, when when you are real with yourself, yeah, when you are real with uh, with other people that you know, God's love is showing through you. The love of God is like it shines through you. That way, that other person will see the love of God and remember that they were that they were called to be disciples. Amen. Amen. We as Christians, especially Christian youths, 
We must live a life of integrity. Uh, I remember yesterday, uh, Auntie Vivian, they were, uh, we, we were discussing about integrity. And this actually came to my mind, you know, integrity. It shows that you are honest. It shows that you are real. And integrity is the number one process to bring down God's love and submit to his glory. Amen? Amen. So I encourage every child, teenager, and young adults, when I say young adults, uh, I mean those who are 18 and above, according to this country. I would encourage you all to take a challenge, to stand out, and listen to, to what God has for you, and share this to anyone who is ready to provoke God's love. Amen. It's very important. No matter where you go, whether you are at work or you're in school, those of you that are uh, planning to go to school outside of Houston or outside of the state, yeah, yeah, yeah like this is a challenge. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Take up this challenge and encourage those who are who are ready to provoke God's love. Amen. 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 I'm going to end with a quote from one of the well-known gospel artists, a well-known gospel hip-hop artist named Lecrae. And he says, as Christians, we have the same calling. The calling is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love others as ourselves and to glorify God in everything that we do this is very this is just simple we all have the same calling we all have our own path that God has prepared for us the only the only uh, aspect and the only duties that we have to do is to love. Amen. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you can't love your neighbor, then how can you expect to love yourself? How can you expect to love yourself? This is very important. Yes, sir. Especially to the youths here. Where is she taking my mind? You have to love whoever hurts you. Amen? Amen. Love whoever has persecuted you. And even if that person is nice to you, the least you can do is, you know, like, crack, crack a joke with them. Hang out with them. And they will see that God has loved you and that God loves them as well. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we glorify you and we exalt you, Lord. We give you all glory and we worship you. Father, we thank you for your word that has been brought forth. Because your word is the lamp on our feet and the light on our path, Lord. Why'd you take my mic? Father, we are glorifying you and we pray oh God that if there's any disobedience that's in us we ask that it will be erased in the name of Jesus Father we ask that you will